This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the second in a set of video clips on computer architecture. It introduces the classical architecture of stored program computers due to John von Neumann. The preceding video clip in this series on architecture explained how algorithms have to be expressed in assembler language to be understandable by computers. The present video clip will now explain what architectural building blocks computers need to be able to execute such assembler programs. Since assembler languages include arithmetic as well as logic and other computational instructions, computers clearly need to include arithmetic units, which usually can perform also logic and other computations. Since all instructions, including arithmetic ones, take one or two operands and compute one result, the arithmetic unit needs to be able to take in two operands and produce one result. Since the operands come from and results go into registers, computers need some sort of register units that they can selectively read values from and write values into as on a blackboard or other scratch pad. Putting arithmetic unit and register bank together, we get this picture, which allows us to visualize the elementary operation of a computer. If the computer wants to execute the instruction add into R3, the sum of R3 and R1, for instance, it needs to present these four instruction elements separately. First, it needs to inform the register bank that it wants to read R1 and R3. The register bank then supplies the value of R1 and R3 on its lines to the arithmetic unit. Second, the computer then needs to instruct the arithmetic unit to add these two values. The arithmetic unit does so and produces the sum 5 on its output lines back to the register bank. Third, the computer finally needs to signal the register bank to write that result into R3 which the register bank proceeds to do immediately. But we're not yet done. The computer needs to know which algorithm it is implementing. Thus the algorithm needs to be recorded somewhere where the computer can find it. This requires a memory unit for storing algorithms to be executed. And this unit needs to be able to take in a line number and put out the corresponding instruction. The computer also needs to know which line it is currently at in the algorithm that it is executing. To this end, it needs a line memory, also called instruction pointer, which can be read and updated as the computer advances through the algorithm. Putting these new components together, we get this new partial picture of the architecture. When the computer reaches line 3, the instruction pointer presents that line number to the instruction memory. The instruction memory then retrieves that instruction line and presents it at its output. Now this output is in turn presented to a simple unit called the instruction decoder, which splits the instructions into its four or fewer elements to be presented to the register bank and the arithmetic unit, as suggested earlier. Now, under normal circumstances, such as after the add into R3, the sum of R3 and R1 instruction, the computer should proceed to the next instruction at line 4. So the instruction pointer must be equipped with a mini arithmetic unit capable of adding 1 to it after every instruction. Yet, as we saw in the previous video clip, some assembler language instructions, such as jump to, indicate to the computer that it should jump to some other instruction than the next one. Thus, there needs to be a switch between the output of the unit adder and the input of the instruction pointer, which can be flipped so that the pointer can be forced to some random non-next instruction. Under normal circumstances again, such as after the add R3, R3, R1 instruction, the computer should proceed to the next instruction at line 4. In such normal cases, 
the, sh the switch should connect the output of the unit adder directly to the input of the instruction pointer. What happens though in the case of a jump instruction, especially a conditional jump instruction, such at line 2 of our program? When the instruction pointer points to line 2, the instruction memory presents the decoding unit with the instruction jump LTE R1, 0, 6. The decoder splits this instruction into its elements, jump LTE R1, 0, and 6, as possible alternate input to instruction pointer to the left of the picture, and it waits for the arithmetic unit to compare R1 and 0. This unit then signals to the decoder whether or not R1 is less than or equal to 0. If and when it does, the decoder reflects this outcome as an indication for the instruction pointer to jump to a non-sequential instruction, thus flipping the switch and thereby causing the instruction pointer input to become 6 instead of the normal 3. All this being said, registers are sufficiently expensive that their numbers are in practice limited to a few dozens. For many programs involving a lot of data and variables, a few dozen registers is not sufficient. Thus computers are provided with not just a large memory for algorithm instructions, but also a large and less expensive memory for more data than the registers can contain. Special instructions exist to transfer data from memory into registers when the computer needs them, and back into memory when the computer no longer needs them in the registers. A complete architecture view of a von Neumann computer is now given by this picture, which includes the instruction pointer and its associated mini adder pointing to the current instruction line in the instruction memory, the decoder that splits instructions into their components and distributes these to other units that need them, including the arithmetic unit and its associated register bank, and the extended data memory, all interconnected by wires wherever necessary.